Good day, grade 11s. My name is Karen Mazokere. I'd like to welcome you to lesson number 53 from one of my textbooks, The Distinction Bound Student, grade 11. I've written economics, grade 10, 11, and 12, and I've also published those books. Well, in this lesson, as usual, we're going to start by uh, revising homework from the previous lesson, lesson number 52. Okay, so this is activity 48 from that textbook. Start at the table below and answer the questions that follow. Well, such questions prepare you for section B, data response questions. And uh, I, I frequent those questions in grade 11 and 10 books um, because I realized that after the grade 12 book, the grade 12 book doesn't have as many data response questions as much as the grade 11 and 10. Uh, but I don't worry much because there's more material out there for grade 12s. Basically, you can use past papers from, you know, from a couple of years back. But with grade 10 and 11, there isn't much. So I had to make sure that I get uh, more practice for grade 10s and 11 in as far as uh, data response questions are concerned. All right, so study the uh, table below and answer the questions that follow. Well, as you can see here, we are having units of goods consumed. So that's quantity 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. And then the total utility that is being um, gained from the consumption of each of the goods. Well, so consuming good number 1, uh, total utility will be 1. So that means marginal utility is also 1. Consuming good number 2, total utility goes to 4. That means marginal utility is 3. Consuming good number three is uh, gives you a total utility of six. That means the marginal utility is two. Consuming good number four will give you a total utility of seven. That means the marginal utility is one. Consuming good number five, that means, um, or oh, that gives you a total utility of six. That means the marginal utility is negative one. So in this scenario, what we can see is that the consumer is going to consume four units of whatever good this is because that is where you can maximize his total utility and consuming good number five will not be um, recommended because that will decrease his total utility he won't get any satisfaction he'll actually get dissatisfaction right so with that in mind let's go to the questions with you uh, which unit of the good yields the consumer the greatest marginal utility uh that will be unit number two why because it gives you a marginal utility of three and no other good here can give you that much marginal utility. Then the next question is the marginal utility from any units shown negative? If so, which one? Well, I've mentioned that already. That would be unit number five. Uh, it gives you a negative one. So that is the one. Okay. So unit number five gives you a negative uh, utility. Then suppose the consumer is interested in buying only three goods, that's X, Y, Z. And obviously you'll be wondering, so where do you get that? Well, it is in the table below. So if you are using the textbook, you'll see that, yes, it's a continuation of this topic. So uh, goods X, Y, Z, um, and that we somehow know that this consumer would derive the amount of total utility from the quantities of these goods shown in the table below calculate the marginal utility for each of the goods as uh, at each of the quantities shown and complete the next table uh, the next three columns of the table okay so uh, i'll make use of this so we have goods x y and z oh these are the goods x y and z so let's calc let's uh, study this table and see what's going on so we have number one to 12 units for each of the, uh, the, 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 the goods, X, Y, and Z. So good number one will give you a total utility of 50, which is its marginal utility as well. Good number two, 400. Good number three, uh, Z, that will be 70. So the good that gives you uh, the highest utility here will be good number Y. Uh, and then unit two, unit three, like that, as you see it. Then from what we saw in the previous question, they want you to calculate the marginal utility. So you are going to work up to this 
column here, column Z, because these three, it's this question 2.2. So let's have a look. Uh, what is the marginal utility for the first unit for good X? Uh, it will be 50 minus 0. So this here will be 50. And for Y, it will be 400 minus 0. That will be 400. Then here, it will be 70 minus 0. That will be 70. Then for good number 2, it is uh, because why I'm saying this, let me write down the formula for calculating marginal utility. That is change in uh, total utility divided by the change in quantity. So what we are saying here, let me do it with quantity number two. So if we go to quantity number two, total utility change from 50 to 120. See that? So it changed by how many units? Uh, 50 to 120, that would be 70 units. Okay. So we say 70 divided by, then we say here, quantity change from one to two. So it changed by how many? By one. Then 70 divided by one, that would be 70. See that here we say it's 50. So basically that's what you'll be doing. So you use this formula for all of them. Here it will be, let me say where it will be, it changed from 400 to 700. So it changed by 300 and quantity changed by one. So in most cases, quantity changes by one. So if you don't want to go through all the trouble, just say 700 minus 400, then you put the answer there. So 300 divided by one, that will be 300. So here marginal utility is 300, but marginal utility there was 400, okay? So basically you do it like that, like that, like that, like that. Then we come to question number two, calculate the amount of utility the consumer gets from each of the quantities of the three goods X, Y, Z, yes, uh, purchased per rand of expenditure on each good. If the price of good X is one rand, the price of good Y is two rand and the price of good z is four rand so complete the last three columns that will be from here to here so complete the last three columns uh, of the table okay so if we come here the marginal utility that we had there was 50 so we write 50 and the price of this good is one rand so the answer here will be 50 like that and the marginal utility here is 70 uh, so divided by one because that's the price then it's 70. So basically for good Z it will look identical. However, for good Y uh, The price of good Y is two rand. So it will be half of everything you find here So here it will be 200 because what we're simply doing here is the marginal utility is 400 and the price is two rands so it's simply 400 divided by two that will be 200 here that will be 150 and so on and so on oh sorry you know what i did this comes here it's a mistake this is because i didn't feel anything on good z so that's why i'm making that mistake <clears throat> and so on so basically it's quite an easy activity and then if the consumer has a budget of 53 rand uh, to spend on the three goods, which of the combinations will be chosen? Well, to get that, uh, you will have to get uh, the answers for this whole section here, from here to there. Everything here must be complete for you to answer this. Uh, I can show you if we go to the answers. Okay, so if you see here, we got it right. Unit two, yes, unit five. And then uh, question three, that is columns five, and five, six, and seven, which is one, two, three, these ones here. Column five, six, and seven. Then uh, question 1.4, that's columns eight, nine, and 10. So if you look here for that last question, it's not there. It will show you from here, uh, that will be at five. No, 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 that's there. Five and five and five okay so which five are we going to use the nine one why uh we are looking at the budget if the budget was 52 then would we'll select this five the one on eight so nine units for good x so take 
uh the the the, the one rand times nine so you have how much that's nine rand and then uh another five we find it there so that is six units of good two so six times two that is 12. so already the consumer has used 21 rand and then we go to the last one which is this one here and where do we get a five that is on unit eight that's why we are saying eight times four that's 32. so this 32 plus this 12 plus this nine so the consumer is going to buy uh, uh nine units of good x six units of good y and eight units of good uh, z and from there we see that he makes use of his whole 53 rand all right let's go to today's lesson today's lesson we're going to introduce a new concept which is price elasticity of demand and i talk about this in passing in the grade 11 lessons when we talk about demand supply uh that uh, topic in term two all right so price elasticity of demand lesson number 53 let's have a look right what is price elasticity of demand well the word elastic simply means okay if we are not referring to economics uh to be elastic is something that can stretch something that can respond something that can change its shape uh when something is done to it so if you look at something like a rubber band uh if you put pressure on a rubber band like you stretch it it's going to respond it's going to stretch so we say it is elastic there are other things like a pen if you put pressure on a pen well depending on what you're using maybe because if you use something else it probably will break or it will bend but using your hand trying to stretch the pen it is not going to stretch by an inch using your hands right okay so it goes to say then your pen is perfectly inelastic if you take uh the uh, part of your let's say the collar of your shirt and you stretch it it's going to respond but it's not going to respond that much so we can say it's relatively inelastic something like that okay so let's have a look at what elasticity is so with economics how does it apply well elastic is an economic term referring to the change in behavior that buyers and sellers have in response to the price change for a good or service so that means when something is done to the price of a good how does that good respond just like what we are saying if you if you put pressure on a rubber band how does it respond so the the the, the term is coming from the fact that how responsive uh, is uh, quantity demanded if there is a change in price of that particular good Right, so the quantity of that good or service reacts to the price changes and the degree to which it reacts determines how elastic or inelastic it is. So we can say that a good is, some goods are more elastic than others. Okay, we are going to look at factors that may influence that and we are going to give you typical examples and you are going to agree with me there that yes, for sure, if price changes for certain goods nothing happens to quantity demanded so for that fact we can say or conclude that uh, its income its price elasticity of demand is perfectly inelastic and you will see that there are certain goods that if uh, there is a change in price quantity demanded will respond drastically or in a huge way so we can conclude and say those goods are relatively elastic I'm, I'm doing this because we have um, two extremes perfectly inelastic and perfectly elastic um, I mentioned that in passing in grade 10 so if you were you've been watching my videos from when you were doing grade 10 you will remember what I'm talking about or if not, you might as well need to go back to lessons 50, uh, 51, 59 up until maybe 65, somewhere there. Uh, if you look for those lessons, you will see I mentioned that. And also those lessons will prepare for these ones that we are currently doing right now. Right, so the elasticity of a good or service can vary according to the amount of closed substitutes, its relative cost and the amount of um, time that has elapsed since the price change occurred so 
uh, in other words, elasticity is a measure of responsiveness or sensitivity. So you'll see that some goods are more sensitive than others, and it depends on a, 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 a variety of factors. For example, the bus industry is very, very elastic because all buses offer a very similar service, uh, getting passengers from point A to point B. However, Let's not discount the fact that some bus companies will be more luxurious than others. Some will offer you better service than others. Yes, 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 we know. However, it doesn't substitute the fact that the bottom line is taking you from point A to point B. Okay, so to those of you who worry how you are taken from point A to B, uh, well, you probably may not worry about the price is the the price of taking people from point a to b basically what we're saying is if you go and check buses that take people to durban for example from pretoria you'll see that they'll charge more or less the same prices now if one of the bus companies would increase their fare uh, it will affect quantity demanded as in people switch to other bus companies that offer the similar service if you're looking at greyhound for instance and intercape well those two are more or less the same like they are probably using the same bus by that i mean maybe the same type of bus as in a marco polo or a man or something like that yes uh, with the same engine, everything is the same. Or let's say a Volvo, they're using, they're all using a Volvo with the same engine, with the seats are the same, and so on. The only difference is the color outside and the name. So if the other one is one thousand two hundred to take people to Durban, and the other one is eight hundred, but if you look at both buses, they are similar. So in most cases, people will take the one that is eight hundred because they don't actually see the difference. Well, that will be so very, very elastic. Like, so if Greyhound was to increase their prices, the quantity demanded would be affected grossly because people switch to the competitor. Now, if you look at uh, those, some another example, like uh, taxis. Well, with taxis, I wouldn't say it's very elastic. I would actually say it's perfectly elastic. Let me give you an example. Let's say a taxi, a taxi cost 20 rand to go from town to mainland in Pretoria there, right? And uh, so all taxis are charging the same price. Then you buy a taxi today and then you say, uh, mine is 25. I will guarantee you that you will not get a single customer because people know the price of 20 and they are not going to compromise because your taxi is new they will all get off that taxi and get a new uh, another taxi because there are way too many taxis taking people to mainland so the point is that one there will be perfectly elastic not just very elastic with buses yes there are differences here and there uh, the services that they may offer and so on, especially those long distance buses. But in as far as taxis are concerned, that will be perfectly elastic. Right. The next point, for the most part, a bus company can't uh, have prices that are significantly different from those of its competitors because uh, this can result in a huge loss of business to competitors. Then let's look at the other term, which is inelasticity. Well, inelastic or inelasticity is an economic term used to describe the situation in which the quantity of a good or service is not affected or is unaffected when the price of that good or service changes. Inelastic means that uh, when the price goes up, consumers buying habits stay the same. That means it is not affected. Well, with this, I normally use an example of uh, a kidney transplant, for instance. Well, it will be looking something like this. Let me give you an example. Okay, so this is what an inel... Oh, in this case, I'm talking about perfectly inelastic. Well, 
there is another side which is inelastic just inelastic but let me show you the extreme then by showing you the extreme it's going to help you understand uh, any any variance okay uh, in other words what i mean by any variance is something like this if you look at these two they are different this one is um by this one you don't know what i'm referring to this one we say it's perfectly inelastic then this one we can say it's relatively inelastic now uh obviously in the next lesson i'm going to make more clarity right this will be elastic just like okay so this is like the greyhound intercape thing that i was giving so i might as well say but let me give another example let me say this is mcfist which is basically a burger and you know it has so many substitutes and this i'll say it's electricity and this i'll say it's a kidney transplant okay right let's say we have the same scenario which is the same price for each one here right and let's say the price is 80 rands <laughs> pardon my handwriting because i'm using a mouse so yeah if i was using a pen that would be easier okay let's say the price of magfist goes up to 160. that's double what you see here it's not even double here what i'm showing but yeah look if this is a 10 this one here and this is a zero this looks like a two so do you notice that if price increases from 80 to maybe 120 for magfist uh, quantity demanded will drop from 10 to 8. If you look at the percentage change here and the percentage change here, uh, it's greater here than it is there. Okay, because if it was to go up by f uh, here, it's going up by what? If it was to go up even by 100%, which is from 80 to 160, here it will probably go to 1, of which dropping by 100% will be going to 5. But do you notice that it's dropping uh, greater than the change in price then if the same would happen to electricity look here if this here is the 10 then this would be maybe a 9 see the change is small here than what you see here and then the same thing here look if this goes up and this is a 10 look what happens if this even if this goes up to 200 this one will not change by an inch. So basically, how do we explain this? If the price of MacFist was to go up that much, quantity demanded would decrease drastically, as you can see, because this thing has way too many substitutes. If the price of electricity would do the same thing, quantity demanded would drop but just a bit because electricity is a unique product with no close substitutes. Now, a kidney transplant, you will need it when you have a kidney failure and it will probably not be affected by the change in price. So what it means is if you need a kidney and you find one and it's going for 10,000 and maybe yesterday it was 5,000. So the price has doubled, but you won't say... I don't need it anymore because now it's expensive in most cases you are going to take the kidney because you need it now it also goes to say if the price of mcfist drops to let's say 40 rands look at what happens to quantity demanded it could even go up by it could double which is going up by 20. if the same thing happens to electricity nothing much will happen it will probably go up to 11. however if the same happens to uh, a kidney just because kidneys are 40 rand today doesn't necessarily mean that you are going to buy one because you will buy a kidney when you need one because if a kidney is 40 rand i'm not going to buy one today because i don't need it so i'll buy it when i need it so do you notice that quantity demanded is not affected by the price it's uh but but for other goods quantity demanded is gr greatly affected by the price for some goods, it's just a bit affected. So all that explains elasticity. I hope you understand. So uh, here we have another example. Okay, let me go through it. If the price of an essential medication changed, let's say from 200 to 210, 
which is a 5% increase and demand changed from 1000 to just 999 units which is a less than 1% decrease the medication would be considered to be an inelastic good because the change in price by a huge margin will not affect the quantity demanded that much it will affect it just a bit however what if it would remain the same it stays at 1000 well in that case we'll then conclude and say it's perfectly inelastic because it's not affected at all so we say this one in this example here it's inelastic or relatively inelastic not perfectly uh, because there is response but the response is very tiny okay and um inelastic price elasticity of demand is a measure of the relationship between a change in the quantity demanded of a particular good and a change in its price price elasticity of demand is often used when discussing price sensitivity so how do we measure these things uh this thing that we call elasticity there has to be a formula somehow so the price elasticity of demand can be distinguished into five categories namely number one uh, it can be um perfectly inelastic which is something that looks like this number two it can be relatively inelastic which looks something close to perfectly inelastic number three it could be unitary which looks something like this like something like a 50 50 type of thing number three it can be elastic which looks something like this like the mcfist example then number five it can be perfectly elastic which looks like this so we go from vertical up until we get to horizontal so we have these differences here okay so the formula then reads like this percentage please don't forget that part percentage change in um quantity demanded divided by the percentage change in price okay it gives us the price elasticity of demand okay so that's the formula that we use and that's what i'm explaining here the formula for calculating price elasticity of demand is um, price elasticity of demand or ped is equal to percentage change in quantity demanded divided by the percentage change in the price okay and uh, measuring it again if a small change in the price is accompanied by a large change in the quantity demanded the product is said to be elastic or responsive to uh, price uh, changes conversely a product is inelastic if a large change in price is accompanied by a small amount of change in quantity demanded so if the price elasticity of demand is equal to zero demand is perfectly inelastic just like i said before value between zero and one indicates that demand is inelastic and uh, when price elasticity of demand is equal to one, then uh, demand is unitary elastic. Finally, if the value is greater than one, way greater than one, demand is um, perfectly elastic to some extent, but just greater than one, like four, three, something like that, then we can say it is what? It is just elastic so here we have an example for example if the quantity demanded but well you might read this example because i also gave you an example and um you can make use of the one that i gave you and yeah that is more than enough so business businesses evaluate price elasticity of demand for various products to help predict the impact of a pricing of products say or on 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 product sales typically businesses charge higher prices if demand for the product is price inelastic for example that's why a kidney transplant will be uh expensive uh because anyone who's in need of that thing 
will buy it maybe regardless of the price so if you are in possession of something that people will buy regardless of the price then in most cases the price of that will be high but if the uh, quantity demanded is greatly affected by uh, the price by, by the change in price then in most cases you are not going to be too flexible in as far as charging a high price is concerned because you know that you are going to lose a great deal of money. Okay, so this brings us to the end of the lesson. And as usual, we end our lesson with uh, some homework. So there you have it. We have questions one to three. Make sure you answer everything and don't forget to look at the mark allocation because the mark allocation helps you determine how much stuff you need to say. Okay, so this brings us to the end of the lesson. And don't, I, I notice here, it's, it should be four as well, I guess. Yeah, because everything is four marks, four marks, four marks. Yeah, so I, I see here, I didn't put the four mark allocation. Well, thank you so much. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Invite more people to the channel and yes, let them also get value. I believe you do get some value from these lessons. Well, thank you so much.